Hello, today we are going to answer the question about the KD Plasma desktop. And the question says uh, the default app launcher height. Is there any way I can increase the app launcher height beyond the max point? You can stretch it to like edit a settings file, etc. So first of all, what is the app launcher? You go right click on the app launcher, show alternatives. And you can see that in KD Plasma, we can have three types of start menu, similar to the Windows start menu. There's application dashboard, application launcher, and application menu. So when it says app launcher, it means application launcher. Okay, which is the default start menu, at least in my Linux operating system, which is Kubuntu 23.10. So I press cancel here. This is the application launcher. It's just an icon. It sits inside of a KDE Plasma panel. When I click on it, it shows the start menu, which in Plasma speak is a pop-up menu or pop-up window. Okay, so there's two entities, the button and the pop-up window. It says that um, the user can resize this pop-up window and we can because we have the resize mouse cursor. So let's resize it. And it refuses to occupy the entire screen. It stops at this maximum size so this is the maximum width, this is the maximum height. Okay, so the user wants to increase the app launcher height beyond the max point. Probably the user wants to, I don't know, maximize the app launcher to the entire screen. So whenever the user presses the start menu button, the pop-up window covers the entire screen. Okay, so what can we do? First of all, let's uh, start the app launcher. And because it's a cute application from uh, my Linux operating system from Kubuntu 23.10, we can inspect it using the application KDAP Gamma Ray. If both Application Launcher and KDAP Gamma Ray use the exact same version of Qt. In this case, it's Qt 5. And both uh, the Application Launcher and uh, KDAP Gamma Ray are provided as dev packages by the Linux operating system, and they're using the same Qt version. So let's first try to install KDAP Gamma Ray. So that would be, let's become super user. apt search gamma ray. Okay, so there's uh, this application. This is for creating develop, uh, creating plugins, so probably .h files. We're not interested in this. Um, Bluetooth, no. Job key, job tracker, we don't need this. Positioning for cute positioning. Cute Quick Inspector, this sounds like something that we need. And Wayland Inspector, we run X11. So, apt install and two packages Gamma Ray. And uh, the Quick Inspector. Okay, they are both installed. Next up, let's start Gamma Ray. This is similar to a debugger. It will either want to start a Qt application using the tab launch, or if the Qt application is running before we start Gamma Ray, we need to select the process. 
okay but which process should we attach to well the app launcher pop-up window is not visible yet so let's expand it and now let's find the process in here we cannot because the pop-up window closes immediately when we click outside of the pop-up window and even so there's no special process that hosts just the uh, this um, plasmoid application launcher so we'll need a process that hosts in only application launcher and then we'll tell gamma ray please connect to only that process so let's create a new tab in console the technology that is used by the application launcher is called KD Plasma, which is uh, um, inherits from the project called Super Caramba and uh, the various widgets that you can see on the screen, like uh, the panel and the system tray and the clock, etc. So this thing are called plasmoids. Or this thing. All of these are called plasmoids. In the source code, the user will see user-friendly strings, not plasmoids, but widgets. Okay. The application that we have that can run and contain only the application launcher and nothing else inside it is the plasmoid viewer so let's see if we have that with an L. this application and um, the dev package that contains plasmoid viewer is called plasma minus sdk so this is the dev package that you need to install in order to have usr slash usr slash bin slash plasmoid viewer okay so plasmoid viewer and then the name of the application launcher let's see the help says um, either a containment or an applet we don't want to specify a form factor horizontal vertical media center planner application we don't want to specify a location floating desktop full screen top edge bottom edge left we don't want to specify x y position we don't want to specify width height size or theme we only want to specify this thing, an applet. So application launcher is a plasmoid, a applet, a uh, widget. Who knows what other terms exist for this thing. Okay, application launcher. Let's see what's the name of the application launcher the applet name for the application launcher for that what can we do let's search for the or some text in here so launcher to start applications the subtitle Where are you? Launcher to start applications. Where should we search for this thing? Let's search on GitHub. 
So github.com search. Let's search for KD first. Go here, go to the organization KD, search only in the organization KD for launcher to start applications. Where is it? So it says KD Plasma Desktop. KD Plasma Workspace. How do we search for the exact string? Okay, so like this. In organization KDE, within double quotes, the exact string, so launcher to start applications. And it's in Plasma Desktop. And says applets kick off. So the KD Git repository is Plasma Desktop, and this is an applet and is called Kickoff. Okay, so I have. Uh, KDSRC minus build, which is the build framework for writing to the KD Git repositories. Let's use that, make use of that. So cd tilde slash kd src kdsrc minus build kdsrc minus build the name of the KD Git repository, so plasma desktop. So there's 102 Git repositories that need to be Git cloned and built first. And only then it will build the Git repository for Plasma Desktop. We could either wait for KDSRC minus build to finish completely. Or we could uh, trick and tell KDSRC minus build to only do git operations. This should be at least 10 times faster. Or we could have told kdsrc minus build to only do git operations for the plasma desktop and not for any other KD git repository. So that would have been kdsrc minus build the name of the git repository and minus minus src only so don't build don't configure don't install just do git operations and then no include dependencies like this it's useless but let's See how it works. So mega fast only does Git operations for Plasma Desktop. Okay, then let's see where we have the Git clone of the KD Git repository Plasma Desktop, which is in tilde slash KD slash SRC Plasma minus Desktop. And um, in here, let's start Visual Studio Code. Let's find the um, this thing. App, let's kick off. That sounds like a promising directory. So applets kick off, uh, there's the CMake list file for this entire directory with translations and a plasma package. Okay, 
So let's look at this directory, Plasma Desktop Applets Kickoff. Let's start the Visual Studio Code just in here in this directory. So Applets Kickoff. Okay, let's see how it looks like. So there's a ton of QML files which use uh, QML, so Qt Quick. And uh, they use QML packages for uh, Plasma Desktop, this ORCKD Plasma Plasmoid. I'm not sure if they use Qt Quick controls. QQC2. Does not seem to. This, it does. Okay, so somewhere in here, there's hidden a setting which usually in QML land is called uh, maximum width. Okay, so could be this one, could be this one, could be this one, this one, this, and this. We do not know exactly which of these. Um, but the size is fixed. And it's certainly not uh, f the full size of the screen, so it cannot be maximized. Which means that if you resize your screen resolution, so I was at uh, 1440p previously, now I'm 1080p, the maximum size of the, of the pop-up window is always smaller than the size of the resolution of the monitor, such that this right margin of the application launcher pop-up window never touches the right margin of the screen. So how does it do that? First of all, we do not see any absolute sizes in pixels in here. Uh, this one is in, max in pixels, is minus, minus one. But the rest are uh, whatever this sizing thing is. Goes to the parent, computes icon width. The maximum width is the height. So this makes things uh, at most a square. This uses this magic thing, which is Kirigami units grid unit. Let's see what uh, branch are we in. We're on the master branch. Okay. And the master branch is a Qt6 branch. We can see in here, find package Qt6. Okay. So we were at the step where we want to use Plasmoid Viewer, but we do not know the um, name of the applet. So that should be somewhere in here. So an internal ID, probably reverse DNS notation that denotes this uh, plasmoid. So there's two authors. 
uh, bug report URL, description. I'm going to guess that this is the one ID. So at line 155 in file metadata.json inside of the package. So this is a Plasma package, the package directory. Top level, it's the metadata.json file. And in there, there's a the row 155 ID, which says org kd plasma kickoff. So let's copy this thing. Hopefully this is the one. Okay, so back to the Plasmoid launcher, which is in the second tab in console. Plasmoid viewer, minus A or minus minus applet, let's go minus A, and then this thing. Okay, so it opened a mini screen. In here, we only have one um, icon, which is or one button, this button. Um, this button will resize depending on the size of the panel and will behave differently if it's shown inside of a panel or if it's shown on the desktop. This is probably the desktop view. Okay, so if you right click on this thing, nothing happens. We cannot resize it, there's no resize uh, handles, but if we touch it with left mouse button, so if we click on it, it shows the pop-up window. So let's make the pop-up window start above. So depending on how you move the button, the pop-up window will start below or above the button. depending on where it has enough room. Okay. Um, this um, pop-up window keeps closing whenever I touch camera ray and I need to touch the application camera ray while the application launcher's pop-up window is open. Fortunately, we have this button, which is keep open, this pin button. And now, Let's find the application. We know the name of the process in here. So it's called plasmoid viewer minus a or kd plasma dot kickoff with process ID 482574. Click on it, attach. So gamma ray is great. Can change many properties in running applications can inspect running applications, can show many, many details about a running application, but you need to be, um, you need to mind the fact that Gamma Ray will sometimes crash. Just reopen it. If it crashes, just reopen it. That's it. Don't panic if Gamma Ray disappears, the application. You just open it and do your thing again. Okay, let's see how the application looks like. So if the application that we're inspecting is not using QML Qt Quick, but it's using Qt widgets, then we should start from the tab inside Gamma Ray, which is called widgets. It only has three, wi uh, three Q widgets, which are of type uh, Q menu. So this is not a Qt uh, widgets application, it's a QML Qt Quick applications. For that, we start with the, in Gamma Ray, with the tab Quick Scenes. In the tab Quick Scenes, let's collapse everything in the object tree. And notice that we do not want to inspect this window, this thing. We want to inspect this window. That we select in the window selector, this guy, this combo box. So there's a tooltip dialog window, which is 
I don't know, hidden or something. And then there's the view, which is the application Plasmoid viewer. And then the third window is the pop-up window, which is the one that we actually want to inspect and look at. Okay. Let's try to find in here details about the source code. What do we need to edit inside of the source code such that um, the application launcher can cover the entire screen. So we can resize the pop-up window of the application launcher such that it's almost uh, maximized. How do we do that? Let's collapse the tree of objects and let's look at the objects. So there's a Q quick root item. What's its ID? Does not have an ID. Expand. There's a um, QML object of type um, this thing. Let's maximize this window. So we have access to its methods, uh, the properties, which are the most important. We have the connection slots. Height changed, width changed. Hopefully there's no JavaScript method or event implementation that um, implements the maximum width. Hopefully it's declared inside of QML, non-JavaScript, using declarative QML programming language. Applet parent. And uh, here is the source code. So it's in slash USA slash share slash plasma plasmoids or KD Plasma kickoff contents UI kickoff. So this thing. Let's try to copy. And it worked. Okay. So we can try to resize. The application is running. We're connected using gamma ray to the application, we can just try to increase the width and see why it uh, refuses to become bigger than a certain size. So we're at the root item. Width is 600. Let's make this thing 1000. And uh, this window is res this um, QML item is resized, but not any item that's actually visible. So let's go to the next item, applet, parent, make it uh, bigger, so make it 1000. Okay, so it resized to 1000. So it allows me to resize it to 1000. Let's go more. Let's go 1000 and... So this current resolution is 1080p, so that's 1920 by 1080. So let's make this 1900, so 1900. And it refuses and it stops at uh, 1440. So at 1440 pixels width, that's where the maximum width of uh, this QML window stops. 
but we managed to resize the application the window at runtime by editing its properties using gamma ray which that's something okay so let's see this QML item. It's um, 1448, so this is a bit bigger than the applet parent. This is 1008. I'm not sure what this thing is. And doesn't have any children, so probably not important. But this was it. If we change the width of the applet parent, the application launcher pop-up window has actually increased its width. Okay. So there is somewhere a maximum width of 1440 set so it's either set in c++ source code which is hard to inspect or it's set in javascript which is also hard to inspect or it's set in qml in one of these spots where were we in the search So either in config general, in full representation.qml, in header, in uh, kickoff list delegate, in main QML. This main QML seems uh, interesting. Okay. So it's it. I would say it's either a property named um, maximum width, or it's like this layout dot maximum width with an uppercase L, which is an attached property. So this would be an attached property. This would be an attached property. This is an attached property, this is an attached property, this is an attached property. So the only thing that's not an attached property is main.qml where uh, it says if kickoff is in whatever, if the applet is in the panel, it will return, and the panel is vertical, it will return this maximum size, maximum width. But that's an icon size, so I'm guessing this is the size of the button. So if the panel is vertical, like in my case, then uh, maximum width and maximum height is icon size. If the panel is horizontal, then maximum width and maximum height. Maximum height is icon size and maximum width is imp width, whatever that thing is. And if it's not in the panel, it's like in this case, inside of a plasmoid viewer or on the desktop, then the size is a bit bigger. And it's um, maximum width minus one and maximum height minus one. But you cannot resize it. There's no way to resize this window. Okay, so probably is uh, this thing, an attached uh, property with uppercase layout. But then how can we find this thing in Gamma Ray? How can we search? Where can we search? Hmm, this thing sounds promising. What is this thing? Q quick layout attached. Whoa, here is the guy. So 1440 maximum width. Okay, let's see. Is there a binding for maximum width? 
Compact Applet QML. And here it is, the, where are you? How do we open the source code? Code navigation Kate. So in the gamma ray main menu settings, code navigation, I've selected Kate. And I go right click show source. So there's layout preferred width and preferred height, but I do not see any bindings for maximum width. And this thing is a binding or not, because there's a multiplication there. Okay, so this thing is interesting. Let's copy it. Q quick layout attached. And uh, maximum width 1440. But I'm not sure this thing is uh, bound. How do we find if this thing is a binding or because it has a binary operator? So the multiplication that's actually not declarative, but uh, imperative uh, JavaScript. So minimum height, is it implicit height? Nope. Okay, let's uh, copy this thing. Layout maximum width, copy. And the file name. And the line 32. Okay. Let's look some more at uh, the gamma ray. So let's uh, visualize clipping. So let's open the this thing again, the pop-up window. And it's shown in its entirety. Let's uh, keep open. And let's try to increase the size beyond those uh, 1440. So let's increase it in here. So make with, um, you know, this. And where are you? Let's move this out of the way.
Ok. So we bounced back to 1448. Can't we force it to go beyond that? Yeah, we can, and we can see that uh, uh, parts of the QML item are not visible. Let's make the applet parent a bit bigger. Okay, and now the we can see that uh, the entire pop-up window is bigger than 1440 and it's clipped. We cannot see the rest of the buttons in the right-hand side of the pop-up window. So we can see sleep, part of the restart button, but we cannot see the other buttons. We cannot see, for instance, the pin button. Okay, so if we go with the default, which is 1440, the maximum size possible, we can see the pin button, we can see the settings button, and we can see the leave button, shutdown button, restart button. If we go to 1640, then three buttons on the bottom are not visible anymore, and two buttons on the top, the settings and pin, are not visible in the pop-up window. Why is that? We can see it in here. This is the QML item and it's clipped such that part of it is not visible. Okay, visualize overdraw. Let's see with this thing. So we can see how the top right buttons are not shown. What we see is what's inside this uh, cube with um, light blue edges. Whereas this QML item is clipped in here, so parts of the search bar, the right hand side of the search bar is not visible and two, the two buttons are not visible, the settings and the pin button. And on the bottom, these two buttons are not shown at all, the bottom right ones. And the, the second one is shown only partially, which is exactly what we can see in here. So the second, this is the second one, this is the first one, and two are hidden. So clipping happens only in the right-hand side. Everything that's on the left fits inside of the rendering cube and is shown. Okay, so what we actually want is that this entire rendering cube, which right now is uh, 1440 maximum, we want to increase the size of this uh, rendering cube. How can we do that? Well, let's try to go back where we were to this spot. So Q quick layout attached and the maximum width. And let's make this bigger than 1440 pixel. Hopefully the rendering cube becomes wider. Okay, where was that? In the applet parent, in here we search for, what do you search for attached? And this thing, QQuick layout attached, expand, and then maximum width, make it 1740. Okay. So we can see that the rendering cube is way wi wider now.
and the entirety of the top and bottom QML items are visible. And now if we went for 1740 max width, we can also increase the width. Where are we now? In the applet parent. Okay, let's go bigger. Let's go 16. And it's bigger. No clipping happens. All of the buttons in the right hand side of the pop up window of application launcher are visible. Okay. So then how what's the answer to the question that the user has so if the user said um is there anything that i can do is there a hidden setting is there a visible setting that where uh, the user can increase the maximum width in my case with a 1080p resolution to more than 1440 in width. So let's first see if there's a visible setting. So for that you would go right click on the application launcher which you cannot do. But then there's this um, inside Plasmoid viewer. There's the button to show the configuration for the current Plasmoid. And this is the configuration for the Plasmoid um, application launcher which is called application launcher settings so these are the settings for kickoff okay let's see what uh, settings do we have in here so about box um, i'm not sure where the keyboard shortcut is set for the plasma desktop start menu because that's the windows key and alt f1 and maybe other keyboard combinations and then we can change the icon so the icon is a symbolic one with name start here KD type here to add the text label I'm not sure how that works always sort applications alphabetically so that would be inside so this are settings in the application launcher button whereas most of the rest are settings for uh, this thing for the pop-up window so it says always sort applications alphabetically which means you cannot um, drag and drop to move applications around use compact list item style there's search plugins similar to what's available in KRunner, which is this thing Alt F2. Okay, what else? Show favorites in a grid in a list. Show other applications in a grid in a list. Show buttons for power, session, power and session. Show action button captions. those would be hope these ones i guess let's see yeah so now there's no button no labels for the sleep restart shut down leave buttons so let's undo our setting at least we know that the settings are instantly applied to the kickoff that we have inside the Plasma the Viewer application. Okay, but there's no settings for width, height, maximum height, maximum height. If the pop-up window can be maximized or not, there's no visible setting. So as the user says, maybe there's a hidden setting. inside of a configuration file. Configuration files in KDE Plasma are probably INI style uh, plain text files.
So maybe somewhere there's that setting. Okay, but then we guess that this is the the line, the only line where we can set the maximum width. So then what's plasma core units, this thing? So let's see. Next up, we search for this line. Where are you? Line 32. What's the right hand side? So it says plasma core dot units dot grid unit times 80. But what is this? We know that this multiplication returns 1440. So that's 1440 divided by 80. That's 18. So plasma core units grid unit is 18. But what exactly does this I know, property store? So I'm searching for KD plasma core dot units dot grid unit. There's all sorts of um, results. And I've opened some of them up. Let's search in here. So it says plasma core dot units. And here we have grid unit. And this says that it's the width of the capital letter M. So this is similar to the EM in um, HTML CSS, which is a unit similar to pixels and And in this case, it's 18, which I guess are pixels. 18 pixels is the width of the capital letter M. Does not sound plausible. How could letter the letter M be so wide? But that's what we have. And then we have uh, the changes from uh, plasmoids in uh, KD plasma five and in KD plasma six and I search for units and says that uh, plasma core is a KD plasma five thing and was replaced with uh, Kirigami and um, units dot so plasma core dot units dot anything else is kirigami dot units dot the same thing so we should actually replace plasma core with kirigami in this case and in this case okay and then kirigami dot units dot grid unit is the same thing as the size of uh, the letter m and then you compute the height the height of it for large spacing. So in here it says the width of the capital letter M. In here it says the height of the size of the M. Okay. And then let's Take the existing uh, plasmoid, so orc.kd.plasma.kickoff, and let's start editing it, but without actually touching slash USR because the files in slash USR were put in there by deb packages, so we do not want to mess with those. How we do it? We search for KD Plasma Develop, we go to the tutorials. And in there it says that the tutorials were moved to develop.kd.org, which is develop.kd.org slash doc slash plasma slash widget. Okay, and in here it says that um, we have some widgets in slash USR slash share slash plasma slash plasmoids. We can see that. And that we can fork existing wiki widgets by copying the entire widget, so the entire directory org.kd.plasma.kickoff to the home directory in tilde slash dot local slash share slash plasma slash plasmoids. 
and we should uh, rename the new folder then edit the ID in metadata.json delete the metadata.desktop file if it exists okay so let's do something from what it what it says in here Let's see if this directory exists. So ls control shift v. The directory does not exist. Let's create it. Let's copy the the plasma applet which is this one or do we copy the full path like this okay in local share plasma plasmoids correct Okay, then we should uh, rename the directory. So let's do that. So let's try to do exactly what it says in here. So we've um, done the first three steps. And now it's this step where you rename the existing plasmoid from your home directory such that it does not conflict with the same plasmoid from slash USR. Let's see how we do that. So or KD plasma analog clock is uh, kickoff. Control shift C. Analog clock replace with kickoff once, twice, okay, sounds okay. Then um, com github zero and this thing will be and Marius P. And then we also want to rename this part. So the name was analog clock in metadata.json. Let's see exactly what the name is. Metadata.json not authors name this thing application launcher so application launcher once and twice and that should be it so kick off kick off me me kickoff application launcher my application launcher plus my kickoff me my kickoff okay and then instead of using uh, plasmoid viewer it uses plasma window so we'll see about that if it works So we're in the directory with plasmoids. I should rename the existing directory in there.
done. Change and some sets. Okay. Delete metadata.desktop. There's no such thing. Uh, let's look a bit. So metadata.json in here, we did the following changes. Name is now my application launcher, correct? There should be no org.kd. Provides the launcher menu. Okay, that's this should remain in here. And no comment and no name. What do you mean? Let's see comment. No comment. Name. So the translated uh, names at the st the start of the line. There's all of these names. Let's delete the translated names. So it says. You should delete all the translated names. So this thing, the set does not work correctly because um, it's trying to get uh, this thing, which is the start of the line. So it should be something like um, backslash s any number of times. Okay, so we've put uh, after the start of the line uh, any type of white space and then any number of times. I'm not sure if the syntax is correct for said. Let's see. Nope, that's not it. I'll um, I'll fix the syntax of uh, said and I'll try to apply the change on the tutorial page. Let's do it by hand. So all of the translated names. Control X. That should be it. So it says you want to edit the name. I did this prefix. Edit the ID, correct. Delete all translated name. Delete metadata desktop, there's no such file. And now we can just um, run. So let's look at the two possibilities of running this thing. So there's um, plasmoid viewer minus A and then my ID, which is this thing. And let's see how Plasma window looks like. Control Shift V. 
Interesting. It has this theme where it's uh, it's shown as an active application or something. Maybe it's uh, it thinks that it's inside of a KD plasma panel. Well, I don't know. Let's go with plasma with viewer minus A. Okay, so we've um, copied the source code as it is for the plasmoid org.kd.plasma.kickoff and now we can start editing the source code so we were in um, full representation.cml so that's content ui representation.cml there's no syntax highlighting here let's see if we can use kate for this thing control z bg kate dot full representation Okay, at line 32, we'll comment this thing out and we'll put maximum width a value in pixels. So right now it's uh, 1440. Let's make this uh, 1600. Let's restart the Plasmoid Viewer. A bit down. More. Okay. Pin. And we'll resize it with um, we'll see if we can resize this thing let's actually put um, directly the resolution of my monitor so that's with that's 1920 and maximum height and 80. Now I have uh, resized the menu to 1090 pixels width and we can see that there's no clipping the view, everything's in the view. So basically now we can maximize the application launcher by just resizing it. Using the, it's very similar to a window which you can res resize. It even has a uh, window menu. With which you can resize it or do other interesting things. So Alt F3. But it needs to be pinned, otherwise it immediately closes. So when you go Alt F3, the application launcher immediately closes when it tries to show the window title bar menu but if you pin it then you can go alt f3 
and you can see its application title bar menu. You cannot maximize it, but you can resize it to make it really large. And next time you open it, it remembers the previous size. Okay, so that was how to take an existing plasmoid, in our case, or.kd.plasma.kickoff, copy it to your home directory, edit it a bit such that it has a new identity and doesn't conflict with the existing very important plasmoid, which is your start menu. And then you can start editing as you want. You can open the source code in a text editor. You can use Kate, you can use Visual Studio Code or something else and start editing. In order to preview, you can use either Plasmoid Viewer, which shows a window and uh, possibilities of uh, opening the settings of the plasmoid or editing the confinement or location or form factor. The other way of running it is with plasma window which just shows the button and nothing else. It behaves like inside the panel because there the, the width and height are computed um, differently. Okay, the structure, the file system structure for the Plasma package, which is this applet, which is this widget, which is this Plasmoid, starts with um, the name of the Plasmoid in uh, reverse DNS notation, then minimum minimorum you need a metadata dot json which is the metadata file then there must be a main.qml file inside of uh, ui and uh, so there should be a contents directory and in there should be a ui directory a, and in there, there should be a, uh, where is it, package contents UI, There's no main.qml here. Okay, there's a UI for configuration. Config general.qml. As we saw. here so 
So there's a Kirigami form layout, a column layout, and uh, says text icon, a label. Tooltip icon name is this thing and CFG icon. Action on pressed icon menu. Which is this menu with three items choose reset to default icon remove icon then a uh, action text field which is this guy with a label which says text label colon and then it's an action text field Right action edit clear, which is this button. Reset menu label. This is the tooltip. And the placeholder type here to add a text label. This thing. So there's a ton of API behind a plasmoid. And you really need to start looking at the existing plasmoids in order to determine how they create the plasmoid settings windows, how they create the plasmoid icon, how they create the plasmoid pop-up window. Everything is There's pre-made controls for everything that's already implemented as a plasmoid in Plasma. So you just inspire, you, you get inspired by copying a ton of uh, text around from the plasmoids that mostly resemble what you're trying to achieve. Probably in order not to have the mandatory file main.qml in the top level directory inside of package near to metadata.json. No, inside of contents. Okay. It's this um, line 158, where are you? 156, where it says that the main script of this plasmoid is actually ui slash kickoff.qml. So that's inside the contents. And then it goes ui and kickoff.qml. Okay, next up, it says that after you find the entry point QML file, in our case, it's kickoff.qml, but the default is content slash UI slash main.qml. You need to know that um, Plasma widgets, so Plasmoids, can be placed by the user, for instance, or as part of a theme, for instance, that contains a layout. So the widget can be in the panel, which is this case for the start for application launcher. It's just an icon. When clicked, it shows a. Uh, when clicked, it shows the pop-up window. 
it can be on the desktop and if the size is too small it's just going to show an icon if the size of the widget is large enough then it will show the contents of the pop-up directly there's no need to click uh, in order to see the pop-up window you can put the widget in another widget for instance in the panel and you can run the widget like an application very similar to a normal x11 window okay then as the user configures the plasma it drags it from the panel to the desktop for instance etc there's a um, predefined object named plasmoid which through the properties location form factor it will tell you where it is placed how the size the if you can show the icon if you can show the pop-up window etc and you need to respect these uh, values and act accordingly For instance, there's a Boolean property, local variable, which computes if the size is too small. Another which says, should we have an icon? Should we have a label? Is the form factor vertical is the form factor planar etc and then the location it's used in order to determine if it's in panel so if it's top edge right edge bottom edge left edge then it's in panel okay then there are two possible representations plasmoid.compact representation and plasmoid.full representation the small icon view and the full pop-up window Are properties of the top level item which is this guy at line 23 in kickoff.qml if none of compact representation or full representation exist in the root item then the entire root item is the full representation in our case both are defined So compact representation is a mouse area and it's this thing. So just um, 80 lines of source code. until here so what does it do it's copy pasted from other well-behaved plasma widgets and then the full representation is way more complex that's why it's extracted to its own file so it's full representation.html which is this guy which is where we have looked at because full representation contains the pop-up window kickoff.qml is um, the root item okay and plasmoid contains the root item this um, 
global object or what it is, which is this guy. The top level QML item in the entry point QML file. Okay, and from there on you need to study and learn the Qt framework, study and learn QML, the programming language. Most of the Plasma widgets are using uh, QML plus JavaScript for um, um, functions and event implementations. Whereas it's recommended for the KDE applications that use QML to have the logic implemented, the business logic to have it implemented in C++, not in JavaScript. Whereas for um, Plasma widgets is different also because Plasma widgets that are not shipped by uh, the KDE community are meant to be put inside the KDE store and you can download them, those um, Plasma widgets from the get new stuff, which is where are you? Enter edit mode, add widgets, get new widgets, download new plasma widgets. This thing. And in order for these plasma widgets to work on many different operating systems such as FreeBSD or Linux in order to work on AMD64 but also on ARM64 so in different uh, CPU instruction set architectures it's important that the Plasma widget is a package of type K package which is probably zipped has a top level manifest but everything inside is uh, um, no arch so it doesn't contain compiled source code it only contains javascript and uh, qml which will be then interpreted by the qml engine in qt framework and by the plasma libraries But some uh, KD Plasma widgets that are part of the KD repositories do use some uh, level of uh, C++ source code or parts of the business logic. And they also, the default uh, KD Plasma widgets also do um, sometimes operations that are sensitive and elevated such as the task switcher uh, plasmoid this thing can i don't know close any application that's running for my current user or can maximize any application So it um, gets preferential access to sensitive data. So this is it. This is the start of your adventure in understanding and doing minor tweaks to existing KD Plasma widgets, also known as plasmoids, also known as applets. Thank you.